Hey, my name's Kevin. Myself, along with the rest of my group, that consists of Danny Lee, Evan Sellers, and James Heilman. We're going to be talking a little bit, a little bit about how to cook a potato in a microwave oven. We're going to be relating that process using the first law here. So first off, before we get to this, we're going to talk a little bit about the actual, the actual unit we're going to be using. So our specifications for our microwave ovens, it's an 1100 watt unit, which is the same as 1100 joules per second, power delivery. Our model, the model of the microwave ovens at Emerson, the model number is an M7315B. So we, as you can see here, we have an overall schematic of the unit. We have our potato, we have our QN. We'll be utilizing a control mass approach in our first law analysis. And for the actual equation we'll be using for our first law, we have our, our QN equals MC, MC delta T over delta T. So our QN, and one thing worth noting, our QN value is going to be 1100 watts. So this is 100, we're going to treat this as an ideal microwave, meaning it's 100% efficient. That process alone is not, it's not, that's not realistic at all. So it's worth noting, this is going to be, this is, we're going to be using our direct power of, of 1100 watts for our QN. It's 100% efficient. But anyway, our mass along with both of our delta T values, they're all experimentally determined, meaning for our numerator here and our, uh, for our delta T, this is our delta T in temperature and this is our delta T in time in the denominator. And uh, from this relation and our experimentally determined values, we'll be able to solve directly for our specific heat of the potato. All right, so here's the experimental setup. We got the microwave, we got uh, the, the scale to measure the mass and a thermometer, and of course we got the potato. So the first thing we're gonna do is measure the mass of the potato with the scale. And it's measuring 0.294 kilograms. So the next thing we're gonna do is take the temperature with the thermometer. And let it settle down. We're getting about 20.5 degrees Celsius. After that, we're gonna cook the potato in the microwave for four minutes. All right, Ted has been in there for almost two minutes and it looks like it's getting pretty hot, so we're gonna go ahead and take it out at two minutes. Got five, about five seconds left. Two. Make sure it's not too hot. Not too bad. All right, we're gonna take the temperature again. The thermometer. And we're getting about 46, it's rising, 46.9 degrees Celsius. Good. All right, here's our results right here at this table. We have our, our three measured values, our change in temperature, our elapsed time, and our mass. And then we have our calculated value of specific heat. And so we, we plugged our three measured values into our main equation here, our main first law equation. And uh, we came out with a specific heat value of 17.0068 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Um, now this number is very high, and it's 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 pretty high for a couple of reasons. We know one reason is uh, because the microwave is not 100% efficient, and so that's going to give you a high specific heat value. And the other reason is we probably cook a potato a little too long, um, allowing it to get too hot, and allowing more heat to escape from the potato. And that's another reason that will give you a high specific heat value. And uh, so that's pretty much what we're going with uh, for, for the high specific heat value of 17. Um, and that pretty much concludes our experiment. Uh, thank you for watching.